the Ergosense Fusion 1 VCO. It actually contains two different parts, thus the Fusion. The top part is a digital VCO that emulates an analog one with some extended wave shaping. And then the bottom part is a pair of tube suboctave dividers. You'll notice that there's a separate audio in for the suboctave dividers, so you can use them separate from the VCO, which also has its own direct output. This is different from Erica's Fusion VCO2 because that one has an analog core, transistor suboctave divider, and a couple bucket brigade devices to give detuning. This one's the monster of the low end because it gives divide by one and divide by two, or one as well as two octaves down. I'm going to focus on the VCO portion in this movie, and in the next movie, I'll focus on the suboctave portion. Now, as you might have heard in my little demo, it has a few different starting waveforms. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the VCA to draw in this note of the Moog. I'm going to switch up to the sine wave. It actually has a few different settings. Dead center is a sine wave. I might see some extra harmonics hanging around there on my display. That's because I'm overdriving other parts of my signal chain downstream. That's why I patched the fusion through an attenuator to help reduce those effects. If you watch the harmonic display, as I turn down the level of this VCO, you'll see those extra harmonics pretty much die away. You might also have noticed this little harmonic below the fundamental. That's actually a bleed from the Mother 32's oscillator, which I currently have tuned a fourth below the fusion. It'll even transpose as I play different notes on the keyboard. So try to ignore that little notch for now. And just while we're looking at the waveforms and the harmonics, I'm going to go ahead and keep the level turned down, but I'll turn it back up later when we actually go to use it. This sine wave can be bent in one of two different directions. If you take the wave shape in one direction, you see it brings up a nice set of second, third, and fourth harmonics there. And we'll look at the wave shape briefly. A little bit of an additive look on the square wave there. If I go to the other extreme, you hear it's a bit buzzier, a lot more high harmonic content. And again, let's look at that waveform. Kind of a square wave with a little bit of a step in it there. The second waveform is a triangle that can go between a rising and falling sawtooth wave. The middle is a triangle wave with maybe a few extra harmonics thrown in. And you'll notice that the sawtooth waves look very different. Instead of being a nice straight fall off of all the harmonics like a typical sawtooth wave, this one has an interesting rounded fall off there and some additional humps in the high end. It gives it a more nasal character. Just to show you that those track, I'll play a lower note. They come along with it, higher note. I'm kind of off the end of the spectrum there. Now if I go the other direction, I get an inverted sawtooth, but if you listen closely, you'll actually hear the timbre slightly different. I'm gonna turn up the level again so you can hear this. I'll go to the other extreme. Slightly different tone to it. Normally that does not happen when you invert a waveform. But if you look, this little knoll, or like this notch in the frequency response, actually changes between the two extremes. You notice that it's off by a harmonic or two. So I put that down to an artifact of the digitally generated sawtooth wave in this oscillator. And finally I'll go to square wave. I'll try to get a perfect 50% duty cycle here. So it only has odd harmonics of a typical square wave. And again, if I don't overdrive, you see it's much closer to the ideal, but it still has this kind of unusual drop off in high end. I wouldn't be surprised if that's Erica doing a little bit of filtering just to avoid some aliasing issues. I turn the level back up again. Let's go ahead and play with the pulse width. Goes to a very, very thin pulse, a lot of high harmonics. Let's go down low so we can see those beautiful humps in the harmonic spectra. To the other extreme as well. Now there is a control voltage input for that waveform. There's no attenuverter for that input. It gets added to that wave type. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my triangle LFO output out of my Moog here. Run it through another channel of my utility mixer. Take that output and run that into the Wave CV. You see where it's full voltage, it's pretty extreme there. Let's back it off. Kind of go into audio rate if we want. It 
and we can offset it with the wave shape control here. So we go to just very thin variations here. And you can do that with the other waveforms, such as between triangle and the two extreme of sawtooth waves. Nice coursing there. And also with the variations on the sine wave. And of course you don't have to use an LFO, you can envelope those as well. Grab an extra envelope output here. Slow decay back down to zero sustain. Maybe a little bit more depth. Maybe go ahead and take my inverted envelope output. I could also invert it here on my mixer. Same with the triangle to sawtooth. Almost get to a little bit of a West Coast technique here by just bending the waveform instead of filtering it. Notice that my filter cutoffs all the way up here. That tamper changes just from the wave shape. I really enjoy VCOs that have variable wave shapes, by the way, and this is why. And of course, pulse with mod. And we can go the other direction. Take it out of drone mode, a little bit of filter cutoff. So that's a nice variation, being able to modulate the wave shape. I like that. Now, it also has an FM input. It's exponential, it's not through zero, and it's kind of better for noisy sounds than necessarily tonal tracking ones. Let me show you real quick here. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the wave CV for now, just to cut down on any confusion. I'm gonna take the sine output for my disting here, so I have the purest possible waveform to modulate it with. There's my sine wave. Let's go ahead and tune up the disting here so we don't get as much beating between the two oscillators. There we go. So they're pretty much to the same tuning there. I'm so used to waveform display, I can do that visually now. Let's go ahead and bring it to the FM input. Notice that the FM does have an attenuator on the front panel. Go ahead and drone it again. Open up the filter and slowly bring up the FM amount. That's the telltale sign of exponential FM that the tuning changed as I increased the depth. You see that being out of tune here, we're generating subharmonics in addition to higher harmonics. And that's quite extreme modulations. Now the disting also has a plus or minus eight volt output, so it really can overdrive this. I can change the octave of the disting. That's why I find FM on this oscillator works better if you run it through a VCA, so you can get a little burst or pluck there at the start of notes. Let's go ahead and do that. Take the output of my disting, go ahead and run it through one of the channels over here of my VCA. Take the output of that VCA back through the data so you can see what's going on here. So initially I have no modulation amount, even though it's turned up here. I can turn up the level on the VCA if I want to. It's far more useful if I envelope it. So let's go ahead and take my envelope generator output here. Go to the CV input of my VCA. Now you hear the modulation burst. I like very short bursts. Just that little pluck at the start of notes. If you want to hear it detuning, let's go ahead and bring up the Moog here. Put it to octaves.
Here's the layered effect. Let's make it a little bit longer so you can hear the detune. Out of drone, a little bit of filter as well. Shortened up so it's just a pluck. And no pluck. Lots of pluck. Good splat there. So that's the basics of the analog style digital oscillator section of the Fusion VCO. In the next movie, we're going to dive into this two-based sub-octave divider.